Let's bring in our market panel, Barbara Duran of BDET Capital Partners and Paul Hickey of Bespoke Investment Group. Guys, good afternoon. So, Barb, it seems like maybe what happened here in the market is Powell gave us a signal that if CPI and PPI inflation reads come in cool this week and if the rest of the data next month behaves, we can expect a September cut. Is that how you take it? Yeah, that's exactly how I take it, John. I think the Fed has gone out of its way starting last week to start signaling that a September cut is very likely, given the recent spate of economic news we've all seen. And that's whether it's it's jobless claims, continuing claims, the ISM manufacturing and services and contraction territory. I think last week's comments and this week's on the independence of the Fed is clearly, to me, setting up for a September cut. If they see, if, as you said, if the inflation data tomorrow are tomorrow and Friday and in the month of August come in showing lower inflation. So I think he's trying to fend off any criticism that in an election year it would help if Biden is still the incumbent um, helping there. And so I think the other thing, you know, is the um, is earnings growth. You know, earnings look strong going in. This will be the fourth quarter of up earnings having troughed last third quarter. And so I think that's uh, that's going to be a real positive for this market. But I think the Fed was uh, was very clear in saying, look, we don't need to get to 2 percent inflation for us to start cutting rates. And he made a point of everything looks good in terms of the economy growing at 2 percent, but it is slowing. And so he's making it clear that they're now starting to worry about going too far, admitting that they are restrictive. And so I think they're setting up for a cut again, hmm. assuming these inflation numbers come in in an attractive way. So, Paul, heading into earnings season, earnings look decent. The Fed's looking a little dovish. It's one thing to say you're not going to completely dump out of the market broadly because things are, are looking like they could go higher. But for new money coming in for a multi-year strategy, what do you do? So I think from a multi-year strategy, well, it could be painful in the short run here, is you have you know the rubber band being stretched in favor of um, – the mega caps over the the smaller caps at, within the S&P 500. You have the S&P 500 equal weight index underperforming the S&P 500 market cap weight index by the most over a six month period. Um, there's only been 10 days since 1990 when the gap six month gap has been wider and they were all in late 99 and early 2000. So I think you could see some broadening out here. Over the last year, only two sectors have outperformed the S&P 500. That's tech and communication services. Eight sectors are underperforming the S&P 500 by more than 10 percentage points. Uh, so the only one that's only other sector that's even close to performing in line with the S&P 500 is financials. So in that respect, it could be painful in the short term. And, uh, you know, but you will see some broadening out in the market eventually. And if we do get the Fed cutting rates sooner rather than later, that should only help those sectors as long as we're doing a gradual rate, rate cutting cycle rather than uh, some, you know, cycles that we saw in 2000 and 2007 into 2008. Okay. Barb, what are your thoughts on that? Do we see this broadening out? And I ask that on a day where we've just had Apple close for a seventh straight trading day at a record. It has been one of the biggest movers in the S&P and the Nasdaq over the past month, surpassed only by Tesla among the magnificent seven. Uh, so we could talk about rotation, but right now it seems like so much of the rotation is just within this group of seven stocks. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Apple had been a big laggard, and there's lots of reasons why it's been perking up. But I think it's been it's been a real problem in terms of rotation. You know, you've seen since the April pullback, which was what five six percent, you've seen the industrials, the cyclicals, all have and consumer discretionary have stayed flat. And the question is why. You know, it looks like it's really concerns over growth slowing. You know, how much will it slow, and will it help these? Yes. Now we've got more visibility on a rate cut, and that should help, you know, rotation into these sectors. But I think there's still concern about how, you know, has the Fed gone too far too fast um, or, or too long in terms of the rate hikes? Um, so, you know, we'll see. And I think it's going to be tough. So it, it's been, continues to be, as I said in the past, a stock picker's market. And it's always been a question with these names. They've run so far, so fast. You know, how much more can they go? And they keep going. So, you know, the fact is because there's real growth there, real secular growth. And the valuations are getting a bit full. But as rates come down, those PEs can expand more in these uh, long duration assets. Mm.